Hey YouTube, John here, back with another review. And I want to apologize ahead of time for the lighting. Um, I'm actually moving all of my recording stuff down to a more permanent location in the basement. And uh, I'm still struggling with getting the lighting right. Um, but I will get it right and it'll look a lot better soon. So uh, just bear with me for right now. But yeah, like I said, I have a new review for you guys today. And this little menacing guy is the Skull Drone. Now, <laughs> don't let this ridiculous name fool you. Because this little quadcopter is actually pretty awesome. It's made by the Huying Toys Company who are, in my eyes, probably one of the best toy-grade quadcopter manufacturers in the market today. I'm honestly baffled as to why they're not more popular than they already are, because they just make great products. But anyways, enough of this little Huying Toys love fest. Let's talk about the Skull Drone. Now, the Ready to Fly package is going to come complete with the quadcopter, transmitter, prop guard, a full set of spare props, a small screwdriver, and a USB charging cable. The only thing you're going to need to fly is four AA batteries. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the HT brand, uh, will recognize this transmitter. It's pretty much their standard na nano and micro quadcopter transmitter. Uh, the, the layout's a little awkward, but in general, it actually feels pretty good in the hands. Uh, it's on the standard Huying Toys protocol, which means if you do have one of their larger models, like the X6058, uh, you can fly it with a full-size transmitter, so that's a great option. Like I was saying, the transmitter layout's kind of awkward. You know, you have your trim buttons here up on the top, and then you have rotational trim here, or yaw trim. Uh, on the left side here, you have your rates button. And there's a total of three rates with only one yaw rate. But it's more than adequate for sporty flying. Uh, next to that is your flip button. And to do a flip, you'll simply push the flip button once. Input which direction you want to flip with the right stick. The quadcopter will flip once and come out of flip mode. And the quadcopter flips and recovers very well with or without the prop guards on. My only gripe, again, is transmitter layout. You know, the button layout really isn't conducive to any kind of aerobatics like barrel rolls. You know, it's hard to fly, hit the flip button, and then and do a flip and keep flying. It's just, you know, I really like the flip button here on my, on my fingertips. It, it may just be a personal thing, but, you know, it just doesn't work out well for me. Uh, the quadcopter is also equipped with headless mode, which works, you know, about as well as one would expect a toy-grade quadcopter to work. Hit or miss is about the best way to describe it. Uh, to enter headless mode, you gotta have to first land the quadcopter. Then you'll take both sticks and put them down and pull them away from each other. The lights in the quadcopter will flash constantly, indicating that it's in headless mode. Finally, the last thing to cover with the transmitter is accelerometer calibration. Now, in the owner's manual, it tells you to turn the transmitter on while holding the FS button. I found that doesn't work. What I found works is taking both sticks and pulling them down and pulling them in towards each other. And you'll see the lights on the quadcopter flash. Once they're done flashing, the accelerometers have been recalibrated. Now the quadcopter itself is a pretty cool design with this angry little skull face canopy on it. Uh, it also comes in black, which looks equally as menacing. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, Ho Ying Toys really likes to add faces and characters into their quadcopter designs. And this is probably one of the cooler ones they've come out with. Um, at 65 millimeters diagonally from motor to motor, uh, this thing is a little bit bigger than a stand on standard nano quadcopter, uh, and I really like this because it's small enough to fly inside, but large enough to handle outdoor flight with, with really pretty decent winds. Now the included prop guard, which I have right here, actually works very well. Um, you can literally bounce this thing off anything in the house, and the quadcopter will stay in the sky. It's, it's surprising how well it works, and the quadcopter flies really well with it on. It's super light. So really, I mean, if you're going to fly it inside, it's really not a bad idea to have this on. It's going to make your, your experience a lot more enjoyable. Uh, now, as far as lighting goes, there are four LEDs in the arms with red in the front, orange in the back, and there's two white ones up in the canopy that glow out through the eyes. Uh, at first, I thought this was going to be a great night flyer because the bottoms of the legs are pretty much lenses. Um, but unfortunately, the red and the orange are so close together that it's nearly impossible to tell them apart from any reasonable distance. So for me... It makes it a terrible night flyer. Uh, the battery is a removable 150 milliamp hour battery. Uh, it takes roughly 30 minutes to charge the battery. And with that, you're going to get about 6 minute and 25 second flights with the prop guards on. And about 6 minutes and 50 second flights with the prop guards off. You're also going to get a low voltage warning of about 25 seconds before the quadcopter can no longer sustain flight. Which, you know, given this thing's range of about 30 to 40 yards, is more than enough time to get it back to a safe landing spot. So that about covers everything here on the bench. 
So let's get this thing up in the sky and see it in action. All right, we'll do a quick flight test of the Skull Drone. And we'll start off by showing you the yaw rate. Like I said, it's the same yaw rate between all three rates, but it's definitely more than adequate. Um, and then here's the low rate pitch, which you know is, is a lot of fun for flying indoors. Really, this is about as fast as you may want to go flying indoors, unless your, your reflexes are a little better than mine, which I'm sure plenty of people are. Um, we'll switch it up to mid rates, and you can see it, it increases pretty, whoa, pretty significantly. And like I said, the yaw rate stays the same. Then we'll move up to high rates. And this is the rate that I fly it around and outside. You know, it's a little, little too quick for indoor flying, um, but a lot of fun outdoors. And this thing definitely has plenty of power to fight the wind. So it's a, it's a great outdoor nano. Uh, we'll put it back in the low rates and do some flips. So there's a back flip. We'll do a side flip. I said it flips very well, recovers well, um, with and without the prop guard on. So. Definitely uh, good there. Like I said, my only my only complaint really is is the layout of the transmitter. You know, it makes it difficult to do like barrel rolls and stuff outside because you know it's just just not very uh, very well laid out. But that's you know to be said for all of these Huying Toys micro slash nano transmitters. Um, I actually think I might in a future video um, modify the transmitter so that you can use one of the shoulder buttons to flip. Um, so if I do do that, I'll definitely make a video on it. Uh, but really, I mean, that pretty much covers everything with this quadcopter. There's not a whole lot to cover. It's just a, a great fly flyer, uh, a lot of fl fun to fly indoors. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anyone in the market for a Nano, particularly one that you can fly outside. So I hope this video was helpful to someone. If it was, uh, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.